in the saddle up the creek with no paddle. No aliens to battle where we want to go. Without being pompous, we don't need map or compass. We're launching Caddy Wampus on our new travel show. Space Crew Tom, only go with us. Space Crew Tom, on our podcast bus. Space Crew Tom, we see you wrecking us. And in space, no one can hear you scream. Loopy from our earworm, Space Shanty theme. Hello again, Space Crewtonians. It's me, Curdy Clammerwood, back with another episode of Space Croutons 2.0, still podcasting from Van Helsing, currently parked near Swindon's Magic Roundabout. And I want to start off today by acknowledging something my dad used to say. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And the more change you put in the change jar, the more beer I can buy. So cough it up. Why do I bring that adage into our conversation? Because of what happened to me just a few days ago. Sally was there too, weren't you, Sally? Affirmative, Curdy. My place, as always, is by your side. As you know, we are back for a new and exciting Space Croutons mission, regaling you with tales of time, space, and interdimensional adventures. A travel captain's log of strange, new, and unusual places unplaces, and who knows what to broaden minds and hearts alike. No danger, no lies or subterfuge, just light-hearted adventures for all. And let me add, Curdy, that the show has been a traveler's delight ever since we started Season 2 as Space Croutons 2.0, Travel Scout Adventures. Right you are, Sally. Okay, before we get to today's SCTSA agenda, let's pause for a word from today's sponsor, another advertiser who has climbed aboard our crazy time and spaceship, B-I-N Geocache. All right, Granny. Get your beatbox on. On your mark, get set, and go. You wear a silly grin when you take a little spin To find a little tin and see what you can win With Bedford's incredibly nifty geocache Search for hidden treasures A kind of incredibly nifty trip That's sure to bring you pleasure So don't hide, just go seek Oak the tin and take a peek With Bedford's incredibly nifty geocache Search for hidden treasures That's B I. Geocache stashed out there somewhere today. Just tell them Bevsford sent you. That's right, folks. Bevsford, with a silent T, has expanded his business yet again to encompass the world and more with Bevsford's incredibly neat geocache. And in the interest of full disclosure, they are partnering with us to hide specially labeled Space Croutons Geocaching Tins in secret locations for you to discover and collect some incredibly neat Space Croutons merchandise. So, look them up wherever and whenever you can. Now, on to today's adventure. Not a trip this time, but rather someone from our past visiting our present with a warning about our future. Play it as it happens, Sally. Curdy Clammerwood, said a voice in my head. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I talk to myself a lot, but I don't usually call me by name when I do. That was my first clue that this voice was not me talking to myself. Curdy Clammerwood, are you there? I turned toward the computer screen on the podcast console. Sally, did you say something? No, Cordy. I did not say something. Or to be more accurate, I said nothing. Curdy Clammerwood, this is a courtesy communication. Please grab a pen. Write this down. MT25295. That's MT25295. Got it? Hang on. I said out loud, to which Sally responded, On to what should I hang, Cordy? I have no actual appendages, but could perhaps hang on Sloopy with the McCoys. 
or I could hang them high in a spaghetti western with Clint Eastwood or I could just chill at the ready causing the monkeys to sing about me, she hangs out. As Sally was giving me options, I was scrambling for paper and any sort of writing utensil. Never mind, Sally, I said to her. I got it. Tell me the number again, I said to... Heck if I know. What number? I have not mentioned any number. No, Sally, the number in my head. A number in your head could be considered an imaginary number. It is a number that when squared, has a negative result. Are you asking for a squared number with a negative result? Sally, shush. Uh, sir, you don't need to talk out loud. Just think your responses. Now, one more time. Here is the number. M T two five two nine five. Keep it handy in case you need it. Need it? For what? I thought the response. To track the delivery of your package. And the voice faded out. What package? I thought, but got no response. What package? I shouted. Despite absence of grammatical articles, Cordy, I provide answer to question, what package? A parcel or bundle or series of related parts or elements to be accepted or rejected as a single unit. Also slang term used to describe particular human anatomy in conversations on TV shows such as Bachelor and Sex in City. No, Sally, I said. Oh, forget it. A thump echoed on Van Helsing's roof. Sensors indicate an object of some kind has come to rest on top of the vehicle. Perhaps it is what package of which you speak. I slid the door of the van open and turned, sticking my head above the roof while holding onto the door jam. Sure enough, a small box sat on top of the van within arm's length, and I grabbed it and pulled it back inside. My name was printed in the Ship 2 area. Sitting down, I pulled back the tape sealing the package and unfolded the box flaps. Inside was what looked to be a pale pink pre-tied bow tie, the kind with a wraparound neck strap, and it was decorated with very unusual design. One closed eye with a black eyebrow above it on each bow and a set of light red lips on the knot in the center, suggesting in effect a folded-up face. In front of the computer screen, I held the tie to my neck. I could make out my reflection in the monitor. Sally, did you use my Amazon account again? What am I supposed to do with this? I did not place an order for a bow tie, Curdy, though I will say it is quite fashion forward on the face of it. Ha ha. Ha ha. That's not funny, Sally. On the contrary, an AI making a pun is quite funny. Sally, I bow down to your cleverness said a voice coming from under my chin. As reflected in the monitor, I saw the two eyes on the tie now open and the mouth moving. My immediate response was to throw the tie onto the console as I leapt out of my chair, which wheeled across the van floor and slammed into the wall with a metallic crash. <laughs> Came the muffled voice of the tie lying face down on the console. Gingerly, I picked up the tie by the neck strap and slowly turned it over. The eyes blinked and the mouth smiled up at me. What? Who are you? You don't recognize me? Well, no. I mean, I don't know any bow ties that I know of. Curdy, it's me, Timbo. Remember? From your trip to the other dimension. It is an honor to welcome you to our Earth Jimbo tie. Ha ha. Ha ha. Jimbo the tie shook with delight as he laughed. Good one, Sally. Good one. Then he paused to regain his composure. Sorry. I shouldn't be having so much fun. But it is good to be out of that body of mine, even if I'm still not really ambulatory. We found that the mind clears when placed into a simple container, such as my current state. That's why I came to you in this manner. My doddering mind in my human body wouldn't have made the trip. But enough of the jokes, Curdy. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> I have come to request your help. And Jim Bowtie, if I may ask because of your current state, is it a formal request? Ha ha, ha ha. All right, Sally, enough. I blushed as I realized how harsh I sounded. 
But, I mean, how does one handle an unexpected conversation with a fancy party wear accessory? He's right, Sally. It's time to get serious. Curdy, pick me up. We need to do this right. I lifted the tie, I, I mean Jimbo, from the console and met his gaze eye to eye. Curdy, after the event in the wooden, Lucy and Vera returned to us and told us what happened. That the aliens... That would be the Grobanites motorcycle gang aliens? No, not anymore. They were sued by lawyers representing Groban and the Hells Angels for trademark infringement. So, they dropped that name. Intergalactic subpoenas carry a lot of weight in this galaxy. They're still arguing over a new name. But yeah, those aliens. Anyway... As you know, those aliens repossessed the Cordax, and we were hopeful that they would reverse eternity. But after returning from the wooden, they said they couldn't reverse eternity because they did not get all the Cordax. I recovered my chair and sat back down at the console. What do you mean they didn't get all of them? Their fax said... They sent that fax before they checked their inventory. They thought they had them all, but two were missing. Which two? The mood ring and the medallion. But... How? Curdy, if you recall, just before the wooden exploded I informed you that the candidate's limousine had disappeared. No, Sally, I don't remember that. Allow me to replay it for you. The quarter, it's not going to the timber. It's spinning in the air. Growing! The limo is gone. The limo is gone. The limo is gone. Joe and the candidate were in the limo with the mood ring and medallion. So there are still two Kordaks still here on Earth? But surely Joe would have brought those back to you after all that went down. I, I mean, that's why he was here in the first place, right? We haven't seen or heard from him since the wooden. And now with all the intergalactic portals, he could be anywhere, when, or how for that matter. I need your help to find him. Why me? Your Space Croutons travel show. You are going all over anyway. Just keep an eye out for Joe. Wherever, whenever your travels take you and your correspondence. Tell your listeners to help find him. I know he trusted you. Who knows? Maybe he'll reach out to you at some point. Please. Well, sure, we can do that, Jimbo, but the chances that we'll make contact with Joe would have to be one in, I don't know, how many billions? Curdy, eternity has to be stopped. Look, Jimbo... Maybe it's too late for that. Maybe the aliens were right. Your Earth made a choice, and now it is what it is. That's just it, Curdy. It's not just our Earth. What do you mean? Now that everyone is using the portals, we are hearing from scientists in other worlds, in other times and dimensions. They are noticing changes in their realities. What kind of changes? Population changes, dramatic lifespan increases, a drop in age-related and other illnesses, Reductions in births? Very much like what happened to us. I swallowed hard. I'm not sure what you're saying, but it doesn't sound good. What I'm saying, Curdy, is that eternity is spreading beyond our Earth. It is leaking to other time periods, dimensions, and planets, including yours. But how? We don't know. What if we close the portals, stop using them altogether? We don't know where the Cordax are. Without the portals, we cannot find them, and we cannot stop eternity. And I don't need to tell you what happens if we fail. All life, everywhere, will eventually cease. I sat staring at Jimbo Tai, and he stared right back at me. And that's our story. Jimbo's arrival two days ago has changed everything. I believe Jimbo is currently napping in your sock drawer, Cordy. That's right, Sally. The trip from his dimension was pretty stressful. You might say it really left him tied up in knots. Ha ha, ha ha. Still punning, Sally? My research has shown that humans use humor to handle stress. I believe that a threat of total annihilation would qualify as stressful to you. Is my use of humor helping, Cordy? I think I'll let our listeners decide. So, that's right, Space Crutonians. Just when I thought we were done with the whole Kordax quandary, here we are again. I mean, the end of life everywhere is a pretty big deal, so it looks like we have no choice. Meanwhile, we will continue with travelogue stories with reports from our correspondents and our listeners. But we need to get the word out to Joe and the candidate and to anyone who might know where or when they are. 
If you have any information, contact us ASAP. Put up posters, bring in the tracker dogs, flood social media, whatever you can do to help, do it. You might say, Curdy, that we are formally inviting our audience to join the search party. Black tie optional as we already have Jimbo. Ha ha, ha ha. Keep laughing, Sally. And as for the rest of us, just know that we appreciate your time and support, and we will be back soon with another horizon-expanding episode of Space Croutons 2.0, Travel Scout Adventures. And remember to reach for the stars and beyond in your own lives and keep peace in your hearts until our next story time. So when we leave the station For each time or space Vacation You won't want to miss it If you do Well, you And me Space Croutons is a work of original fiction. Similarities to persons, situations, or events, real or fictional, is coincidental and unintentional. Created and written by Jerry, Jace, John, Della, and Jeff Goodson. Episode story by Jeff. Original music by Jeff. Production by Della, Jeff, and Jerry. Featuring the voice talents of Barry Shea, Jerry, Della, Jeff, and Sally. Entire work copyright 2021 by Jeff, John, Jerry, Della, and Jace Goodson. This has been a Goodwitch Audio Production.